Hi, my name is Maria from designbymaria.com. When I was the primary president, it was really challenging to keep the primary staffed. And once I did get these wonderful teachers called, then the challenge was to make sure that they were excited about their callings and knew what they were expected to do. I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but of course, disclaimer, I don't speak for the church. Make sure to consult the handbook. I interviewed a couple of people to help me with this. First was my sister. She is currently serving in a primary presidency in her ward. We usually give them like a treat throughout the year. This year we did like a little crumble cookie and said we would crumble without you. But I think the biggest thing is just letting those teachers know weekly when you see them out and about, when you see them at church, just how much that you appreciate them. If you ever hear anything from kids about their teachers, make sure you pass that on or from teachers about kids. We're constantly telling the teachers little things that we hear from parents and the kids. Whoever's conducting will stand in and like this week I was standing at the door and when I saw those teachers come in, I was just like, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I really appreciate it. And just sending them random texts and say, hey, thanks for all you do, just so that they know how important they are. Cause really without them, our lives would be a lot harder. <laughs> They're such a great asset and we have some teachers in our primary that I swear are lifetimers and every year we talk to our teachers individually, whichever counselor. So we have one counselor over junior primary and then our president is over senior primary and then we have one counselor that's over like the activity days and we talk to those teachers throughout the year and just touch base with them and say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling about your calling? Are you having any problems with any of your students that we need to talk about, any of the kids in your class? And we just touch base with them regularly. And at the end of the year, when we're kind of revamping for the next year, we're like, okay, how do you feel about another year? And sometimes those teachers will say, hey, you know, I'm kind of done. And then some teachers will be like, yes, I'm ready for another year. So I think it's good to touch base with them, to let them know, because we have some teachers, like I said, are lifetimers, but every year when we talk to them, they're like, no, I belong in primary. This is where I need to be. I love it. And those are the kind of teachers we need. And so we don't want to release those. So sometimes just talking to them and figuring out their feelings helps a lot. Off camera, my sister also said, that they have divided their presidency up so that certain presidency members help certain teachers to find subs. And I know that my teachers really appreciated having a good sub list because it can be stressful and sometimes you don't want to accept a primary teaching calling just because you're stressed about what if there's a Sunday that I'm going to be gone and it can be stressful to find a sub. So if you can help your teachers find subs, that is awesome. We also like to give little treats or little gifts, so I decided to design some tags to go along with these gifts, and you can find those in my Etsy shop. Another thing that is similar to what she was talking about is towards the end of the year, we would also talk to each of our primary teachers and see how things were go going and how they felt about the upcoming year. And this was really great because a lot of the teachers were happy to stay where they were at, but there were also some that were that opened up the opportunity for them to share things that they were struggling with. To learn from my mistake, I talked to one of the teachers and she was also teaching school in the similar age range and said, you know, I think I would like to teach a little bit older. So I took what she said and as we moved things around, I was able to move her up to one of the oldest classes. And I went forward, passed out the books, and moved along with the year. Well, I got a call from my bishop, which is always great, right? <laughs> and come to find out, she was upset because the class that I had put her in was with one of the bishop's children. And she felt really intimidated by this because she felt like she was still kind of new in the gospel and still learning herself. And she did not want to be teaching that class. Make sure before you make any changes to go back and check with them and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. How do you feel about it? So just having good communication. Next up, we're going to hear from my friend Stacy, who was just released recently as our primary president.
For teachers, we really wanted to get our teachers to not get burnt out. And so a few of the things that we did to help them throughout um, the year would be that sometimes we would just suffer them randomly. Or um, the fifth Sunday lessons when the whole church, with all the men and women would be meeting, we would let all our teachers go to those meetings as well. So And we would just do like a sharing time type of activity type of lesson with all the kids and so we would do that pretty much every Sunday and we also do that for the teacher training so that when the Sunday school president does the teachers the training he could assume all at once and then we would just do a sharing time as well plus that also helped us get to know the kids and they would get to know us more and it was just kind of fun to be able to do that um, something else we did was we each they each, each class had their own bucket of supplies so that they didn't have to rush to the library before so each little bucket had crayons, scissors, pencils, tape, and paper, and a manual. And so then they would just, when they get to the primary room, we would just give them each their own bucket so that they didn't have to go to the library and grab all those supplies because that takes up time because 20 minutes of their lesson is really short. And so that was one of the struggles with them. And so we tried to hurry and get everything as much as possible for them. Like Stacy, we also had teacher trainings. And we also went and visited with newly called teachers and made sure that they were set up for success. During our teacher trainings, we really encouraged our teachers to develop rapport with the kids that they taught. Show the kids that you love them and develop a relationship with them, not just during church, but outside of church. I am so blessed because my youngest son has had the most wonderful primary teachers. His teachers have really tried to make the lessons fun and he just adored them. So this year he got new teachers and they are also amazing teachers. These teachers brought over a little fish treat at the beginning of the year and it said, you are officially a member of our class. And I just love that they took the time to introduce themselves to the kids before Sunday and start developing that relationship. Also on his birthday, they came over together and they made a personal visit. I hope that these suggestions are helpful to you in your primary. Of course, if you have other suggestions of what you've done to support your teachers, please leave them in the comments so that we can learn from each other. Thank you.